Hello and welcome to Dr. Suits Gaming Plays Stellaris, I guess is what we'll call this. Um, new DLC just came out today, Galactic Paragons, uh, on the 7th, almost the 7th, oh yeah, the 7th anniversary of Stellaris being out. Stellaris came out on May 9th, 20, what is that, 2016? Um, I purchased it. I believe on May 16th or May 17th of the same year. <clears throat> so I've been playing basically since it came out. Um, I have almost 2,100 hours in it. Hopefully I can reach 2,100 by my seventh anniversary, meaning I would have averaged 300 hours a year playing this game, which is not as much as some, but I feel like it's more than a lot. Uh, I've played this game through a lot of iterations. It's fantastic. Uh, if you like strategy games, hopefully you're watching this because you do like strategy games, or you're watching this because you like me. Uh, either way, thanks for watching, and hopefully you can enjoy. I figure that I'd just do a pretty basic UNE run for this one. I have no mods enabled, not even graphical ones, which is a bummer, but my graphical mods break the game right now and just crash. so. Uh, when they start working, I will make an announcement at the beginning of that video that the what mods I'm playing with, so that if you like them, you can download them easily. So yeah, we'll just do a basic UNE run. Um, new mod, new DLC adds a new ruler trait section. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it <clears throat> how it is for this basic one, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, in game, I like to do huge galaxies, but maybe we'll try something a little smaller uh, for this video so it doesn't go on for you know 20 hours. <laughs> uh, 12 AI embers works for me. Let's see how we want to do this. Ooh, excuse me. Um, I always like spiral forearms because reminds me of the Milky Way. Uh, I do no advanced starts because I like to be the most advanced one. <laughs> uh, Fallen Empires, I usually do three or four. We'll do three for an 800 star. Marauder Empires, we'll do two. That way, I'm not sure which one will be the mid-game crisis. Tech and Tradition cost, let's go back up to one. Habitable Worlds, I always reduce this. Uh, we will play at 50% Habitable Worlds. I think there's just too many in the game, and it can create a lot of lag when there's a lot of pops still. So we'll, we'll leave it at 50%. Uh, Pre-FTL, let's bump this up. I always like playing with a lot of pre-sentient or pre-FTL civilizations. I think they make the galaxy a little more dynamic. Crisis strength, let's go ahead and crank that up so we can have a little bit of a challenge. I don't, I, I have a lot of hours in this game and I feel like I'm pretty good at it, but I prefer to play for role play rather than min-maxing my stuff. So, you know, I, I can't necessarily take on a times 25 crisis like some people can. And I still like to be able to beat the crisis and, and win. Crisis type will do random, because that's what I like. We'll bring this back down. I was doing some roleplay um, games previously with uh, slower tech. Um, we will leave this as the basic ones, which is 2300, 2400, and 2600. Difficulty, I usually play on captain, but let's go ahead and make it a little more challenging for me, I think. Um, Let's do common, and nah, we'll just do captain. We're gonna do basic, I'm learning some new DLC stuff. Scaling difficulty, uh, I like to do scaling usually. Um, it means that the uh, AI receives their buffs at different points. Um, so off means that they start with all of their buffs right away, uh, which can make the game far more challenging right in the beginning, uh, or because the AI is not necessarily the best at how it plays. I prefer to actually do bonuses throughout the game so you're not starting off with AIs that are, even if they're not advanced, they are gonna be significantly stronger than you right away. So we'll do it, we'll go late game, you know, make it easier for us. Uh, difficulty adjusted AI modifiers. Oh, I don't know what this one is, this looks new. Empire-wide economic modifiers are multiplied by difficulty bonus for AI empires. For example, a technology which gives 20% materials from minor jobs will instead give 40% for AI empires on Grand Admiral. Okay, yeah, we'll go ahead and leave that off because it doesn't really, yeah, that's fine. AI aggressiveness, it's either normal, high, or low. We, we're gonna leave it on normal, you know. 
uh, Empire Placement, Random, Advanced Neighbors Off, Hyperlane Density. Uh, you know, you can kind of play this wherever you want. Uh, full, I don't like at all, because uh, if you're playing with Hyperlanes, I mean, it's the only way you can play now. They used to have different methods of FTL travel, and I do kind of miss that. But Hyperlane Density, I, I usually go at one or 0.75 it just creates a couple more choke points so it's you know a little bit easier to build defensive stations um, abandoned gateways i don't usually like having abandoned gateways which is why it's off um, i just feel like i want to build my own gateways in the late game and not have gateways wherever they randomly are um, Wormhole pairs, I usually have this at 0.5 or maybe 0.75. We'll do 0.5 today. Guaranteed habitable worlds. I am going to go two on this. I normally do one or zero. Um, but yeah, we'll go two for this one. L gates on, caravanners off. I don't like caravanners, they aren't useful to me. I just get annoyed with them. Um, the logistic growth ceiling and growth required scaling are both interesting mechanics as ways to uh, halt pop growth a little bit or slow pop growth or speed up pop growth. Um, but I I did try to run a, um, a couple tests and I would have the game play itself for like 50 years, 100 years, 200 years with different settings. I'll have to see how far I got in that, um, but that did take a considerable amount of time because um, I was trying to figure out where the right, wh where the best settings were for my specific PC. Uh, but I've gotten a new CPU since then, so that's not going to be effective anymore. <laughs> uh, Iron Man mode is for achievements. I always play it off. Usually, I you you know I have quite a few achievements, but I'm not an achievement hound. I like to be able to save and reload my game from previous saves if I've really done something dumb. So let's go ahead and load into the game. All right, so here we are, the United Nations of Earth, representative democracy. We are fanatic, egalitarian, and xenophile with Beacon of Liberty and Idealistic Foundation as our civics. Um, council positions are new, so I will kind of touch on those for a little bit. I, I have jumped into this briefly before I started so I could see where some different button layouts were. Um, so let's go ahead and, and begin here. Uh, if you haven't played before um, and you're new to Stellaris, this is the system map. Uh, each star system has this. Uh, you'll have the planets, asteroids, moons. Um, some moons will have and planets will have resources and some won't. You'll see here we have four Vestas and asteroid. Jesus, that was loud. Um, it has no resources, so it has no name. Uh, Neptune has no resources, so it has no name, but we've got Titan and Saturn, both have resources. And uh, what, Jupiter and Callisto, but Io, Europa, and Ganymede don't have any resources. <coughs> um, we've then got the galaxy map, which is here. So we're kind of you know, near the edge here. Um, and you can see these are the hyperlanes. This is showing that there's a planet here. It's size 13, so it's kind of small, but you know, it still should be good enough. Um, continental world, so we're going to be very habitable with that. Uh, you can see the resources in the system, or you can turn that off. I always have it on because I like to see what my systems are producing. Uh, in the outlier over here, I have things organized, my planets organized by sector, which won't matter early. It probably won't matter for quite a while but uh, it helps me be organized as to which sectors are producing which aren't. Uh, military fleets, we've just got one. We have one shipyard right now, and then we have two civilian ships. Uh, up along the top here, I, I play, uh, I have 2560 by 1440, so hopefully this doesn't look too small for people viewing this in 1080. Uh, but we have energy credits, min minerals, food, consumer goods, alloys, influence, Unity, science, which is then further broken down by physics, society, and engineering. Uh, strategic resources, which are volatile modes, exotic gases, rare crystals, living metal, zro, dark matter, nanites, and minor artifacts. Uh, we have then got empire size, 
which while it's below 100, there's no costs. When it goes above 100, then we start getting uh, our science and unity get more expensive. Our total population, our leader capacity, which is, this is definitely a little different here. Um, so you have one admiral, no generals, one scientist, and two governors, and no z three envoys, but none being utilized right now. Starbase capacity, one of three, and naval capacity, three of 20. Um, so we have three notifications right now, and it's all going to be science. And this is new. It used to be one scientist per section. We now just have our Sean Brockbank as head of research. Um, so we're going to go ahead and pick. I if if these roll first the extra research ones i always take them um because they cost the same and just getting that immediate 20 percent boost means that you'll start researching faster so here we don't have it so i have to make a distinction here we can see the cost 2000 3000 2000 and what what type they are um which used to matter more um i'll have to see how this works exactly but your re scientists would have a skill and if the skill matched with this with this industry, Voidcraft industry, um, it would research much faster. So picking ones that match with your root scientist was a, a good way to research quickly. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do mining station output 10% because that's that's gonna be a pretty big one there. All right, we got nothing else going on. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the uh, government screen here. So this is all new. This is your council. Um, and they're all pretty young. My head of research is 30 years old. My president is 32 and my minister of defense is 34. Uh, so something must have happened where all of the older people died and it's this m middle generation <laughs> that has taken over control of the government. Um, okay, so we've got uh, an agenda going on that's launched opportunities uh, that gives me uh four percent pop happiness and when it's launched it gives ten percent happiness and it will last for 10 years it's got 30 months until it's ready okay so it's pretty close we don't want to mess with that right now uh, we've got two other council positions we need to expand the council to unlock um okay so these are our agendas here we can do evolving society, expand the council, give and take or open arms. We have one going already, so we should just leave this, leave this alone. Um, head of research, let's see what he does. Um, da -da 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 -da. Head of research, oh, he's actually commanding a ship. Okay, interesting. Traits capitalist. Uh, this leader, monthly energy credits plus four, okay. He's my head of research and he gives me energy credits. What was he doing before this? Uh, capitalist. Previous job was a researcher. He's egalitarian home planet Earth. Okay. Interesting. Generated. Oh, yeah. See, this, this is the scientist I want. Increases survey speed by 15% but does cost 97 so this this guy's just not useful as a researcher i mean yeah plus four energy credits is okay but that's not great um we have factions but they don't show up yet they'll show up at some point soon ish policies and edicts we're gonna go ahead and open all these up make sure this is what we want um so they've reorganized this this used to be two separate screens and i would always forget about the edicts i'm actually glad that they've put these together because hopefully i'll use this uh, we have 0 out of 15 used edict funds, so we could actually activate either of these, um, encourage political thought or fortify the border. Neither of these are useful right now, so we're just not going to. Diplomatic status, expansionist, like that. We're going to try to expand. It gives us uh, minus 10% outpost cost and plus 15% colony development speed, but plus 100 border friction. Uh, thankfully, there's nobody bordering us, so we'll be okay there. War philosophy, unrestricted wars is what I like to do. We are playing egalitarian. We could switch to liberation or defensive, but we're just going to leave it for now. Uh, we're going to see what comes up later. Subjugation war terms were balanced. Um, I guess we could go bene benevolent, but you know we're humans. We're, we like to think of ourselves as egalitarian and nice, but you know, we're overall not that nice. Orbital bombardment, indiscriminate or selective. Um, we'll say indiscriminate for now. We may change that later. Orbitable, orbital surrender acceptance. Uh, 
means that foreign citizens of the race we will gain occupation of enemy planets from orbital bombardment of planets without defensive armies if they choose to surrender perfect okay yeah so this is a new new thing previously you would have to land troops on every planet you want to take over now uh planets will surrender if you bombard them to a certain point which is makes wars much easier resettlement prohibited or allowed uh so this is forcible resettlement so if we take another planet this would it's prohibited so we can't forcibly move people from earth to alpha centauri 3. Um, first contact protocol proactive we cannot attack neutral entities other empires will find it easier to establish communications with us and we gain 50 percent more influence from each successful first contact process yeah. go ahead and leave that open border status yep yeah. Mixed economy, I always have mixed economy initially because you're not usually making enough of either to make a difference. Um, this is for consumer goods and alloys. Trade policy will unlock more as we go. Robotic workers allowed. Population controls prohibited. Uh, if we allow this, it means that in the, oh yeah, they reorganized all this. In the um, species screen, we can tell certain pops that they cannot grow so they can only maintain the number that they have slavery prohibited sounds good purge prohibited sounds good okay um society management so this is traditions we'll unlock those as we go relics we'll unlock those as we go technology leaders okay sweet so admirals we have an admiral already we have no generals but we have no ground forces so we don't need that yet governors we have a president and we have terry mitchell let's Trade value plus 15% to Earth. Okay, I like that. Scientists. Once we get 97, I think I'm going to have to just swap this person in. Um, species. Uh, so yeah, like I said, uh, population controls. If we wanted to stop them from growing, we'd do that, but we don't want to do that. <laughs> That's our only pops. Planets and sectors. Uh, we'll expand on that later. Expansion planner. We'll expand on that later. Fleet management. So they've combined these now. Um, this used to be two separate things, and now it's one, which I think makes it easier. Uh, the AI designed ships aren't bad, but we're going to go ahead and design something a little different. Um, actually, I kind of like this one. This is fine. So the nu nuclear missiles and then two small mass drivers. Missiles used to have their own slot. They don't now, um, which I, I think is a little bit better. Uh, no reaction booster. Because I'm a little anal, I'm going to move those next to each other. So we've got generator, hyperdrive, chemical thrusters, radar systems, basic combat computer. Um, I like this. That's good. Um, yeah. We'll just go ahead and leave that. We're going to change the name, though. Let's change it to Atalanta. Um... Seahorse class. Yeah, why not? So we'll use class Corvette. And we'll leave auto upgrade on. It means it'll auto upgrade all these as we unlock new ones. Um, and let's go ahead and then we're going to do a picket ship and we're going to do red lasers. Uh, lasers have a shorter range than mass drivers. You'll see this is 0 to 50, that's 0 to 40. Um, and then. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. <coughs> um. Red laser, lasers tend to do more armor and hull damage and less shield, uh, whereas, uh, oh gosh, where'd it go? Mass drivers and kinetic will do more shield and less armor. Uh, missiles avoid shields entirely, just completely bypass them, um, but have a very high range as well. Uh, we're going to do the same armor on that. Let's change the name to a Piranha class Corvette. Sure. Um, oops, I forgot it's in the same screen now. So now we're going to do, we're going to retrofit this for a Soyuz, and then we're going to add, here we go, the Piranha. There. All right, cool. So we'll see, it's going to cost us uh, a bunch to do that, but we're just going to hold on for now. Um, we're going to send this science ship. Okay. Oh yeah, and they've added this now. Automation settings, explore systems, survey systems. It used to just be they would only survey systems. Um, but now you can have them do investigate anomalies, ex ex excavate archaeology sites, research special projects. So that's nice. Uh, we are going to send them to Alpha Centauri because we've got the continental world. 
let's go ahead and build a new science ship because we're going to want at least one more. This guy is going to go... What do we need more of? We need more minerals, and we have one mineral. Here we go. Two. It's not being used. You can see it's white instead of green. Build mining station. Okay. That's that. Then we're going to send that guy there, and then there, and then our other ship, science ship can go there, and then there. We're finally going to unpause. And we'll go ahead and crank it up just one. I usually play on this speed. Um, oh yeah, we'll pause here. Planetary screen, for those of you unfamiliar. Um, uh, so we've got the buildings down here and districts up here. Uh, districts are based on planetary features. Uh, buildings, you unlock more slots as you upgrade the city districts, or as you build more city districts, and you upgrade the planetary administration building. Um, we have got our governor here. It's an empire capital. Continental word habitability. Uh, stability is up here. Current population. And then crime. We're getting 8% right now. We have one available job, eight housing available, and four extra amenities. Um, given the fact we only have are producing three extra consumer goods, the first building I usually build is a civilian industry to build more uh, consumer goods. But we're going to have to wait because we need 400 minerals to do that. So 20 minutes into the video here, and we'll go ahead and hit play. Oh, our science ship is built. Um, so 97. Boom. There we go. Yes. Construction completed. Oh. I'm here to serve the Emperor. Tell me what needs to be done. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so I've changed these pop-ups now. That's a new type of pop-up. Now we're going to go into government, and we're going to cycle this one out for this person. Boom. Perfect. So now... We are getting Romer as our science. Survey speed. Yeah, love it. Alright, um, go ahead and hit play again. Um, I always manually control my science ships for the early game while I'm exploring because I want to make sure I'm getting local choke points. After the early game, I usually set them on auto explore. So our construction ship has finished. We can go ahead and build another one, but we kind of want to wait. I really like to get... Anomaly. Okay, here's a good thing. Uh, but before I get to that, I do like to wait until I can build my first building sometimes. Other times I'll just max out the starting system before I go on. Um, so this... Uh, oh my god, I'm blanking. This anomaly... It's challenging compared to my scientist level, and it's going to take 540 days. That is a long time early game. I usually leave them until they say 100 or less, uh, or until I've researched enough or surveyed enough that I can send a science ship to just go and do all the anomalies. So we'll go ahead and leave that. System survey concluded. Okay. Covered an artifact from an ancient alien civilization on QH-677. From what we've translated so far to the language, we've learned that these aliens called themselves the Eurasian Concordat. Okay, so we've just found our first um, uh, precursor relic. Uh, precursors, there's five different ones. Uh, the fans have been asking for a way to predetermine which one you get, as they are... There's definitely better and worse ones. Um, I can't quite remember what this one really does. Uh, the one I really know, the one everybody knows, is the Cybrex. They definitely have the best uh, rewards for having them spawn near you, but you know, we'll be okay with this. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I may not read all of these event pop-ups that happen. There tend to be a lot of them. Usually, I I've played enough that uh, the storylines I, I know for most of them uh, and so I'll usually look at the options and see which option will help me the most in that moment. Um, or I'll pick the option that I know will lead to better options later. So let's we'll go ahead and do this. We get 50 minor artifacts for it uh, and begins the Erasian event chain. Situation log has been updated. 
and this is our situation log, this shows all of our active situations. Uh, so we need six harassing artifacts in order to discover their homeworld. Human xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the recent findings of alien life. This fevered storm in the scientific community has had some negative yet temporary impact on pursuits in other fields. Oh. Uh, this is an event that pops up at the beginning of every game. Uh, first contact protocols. We should uh, determines what your first contact protocol is. We've already gone through our um, government policy and made sure that we liked it, um, which is proactive. And we are going to be proactive. For the UNE, we think we're all that in a bag of rice. Uh, I don't know what the actual phrase is, so I apologize if I got that wrong. Uh, or I can't recall what the actual phrase is anyway. So we'll just go ahead and greet them with open arms. We have over 400, so we're going to go ahead and build the civilian industries. That'll take a year. Uh, We've also got a couple new objectives or uh, notifications. System fully surveyed. We don't need that. Anomaly. We got that a while ago. We have a new one here um, that's a tradition. So we can go ahead and pick a tradition. We have uh, quite a few, um, and I think they've added more now. Oh, yeah, there's definitely more. Um, so let's see. What are some new ones? Uh, statecraft is new. Um... Aptitude is new. Uh, and you can only pick seven in total. Um, I usually would do expansion, some combination of discovery, expansion, um, prosperity, uh, supremacy, usually if I'm going more military, subterfuge sometimes. Um, recently when they added it in, I was doing some politics as well. That's That's a new one. Uh, or newer um, but let's go ahead and see yeah, what these do here uh, and very truly prosper in the guidance of strong leaders leadership conditioning leader upkeep okay start leader starting traits plus one ascension perks unlocked plus one okay oh well ascension perks unlocked is for everything once you complete everything um, uh, I think what we'll go do is either expansion to discovery um, they're usually the top two to go with right away um, because I th I can't remember if I did two planets or one now that I've made it you know <laughs> they're almost 30 minutes into this video uh, I think why is this just blinking like crazy okay well I had to just reload in order to get that thing out of the way um, Okay, so what happens when I delete the things? Okay. Okay, reload it again. I'm not going to cancel these, but I am just going to click on this one. Um, and let's just do, because I can't remember if I did one or two, let's go with, um, yeah, let's go with discovery. You know, let's, let's do science, and if I need to, I can always go expansion. I do really like this colonization fever, but, you know. It, Council agenda available. Council agenda chart the unknown has been unlocked. Okay. All right, we are still waiting. What's chart the unknown though? Survey speed, 25%. Okay, nice. Um. Yeah. So we can keep going now. You can build. Anomalous readings registered. You can build using your construction ship directly from the galaxy menu by right clicking on the star. Makes it very easy uh, to just build up systems very quickly rather than having to go in and click on specific things and right click them. Uh, so we've got a new anomaly, and you'll see it says 100 research time, so I am going to go ahead and research that. Anomalous readings registered. This one says 100 as well, so I'll go ahead and research that. We've researched this planet. Let's see what it is. So it's mostly a generator planet, so that'll be be nice. Get some money out of it. Um, oops. So this anomaly gives plus four minerals to Procyon 3, which, hey, we like that. That's nice. 
I'm just selling my construction ship to finish building up the solar system and then move over to Alpha Centauri where I will build a star base and then colonize the planet. Uh, Habitable World, Sur World Survey is a basic event happens near the beginning of every game. Uh, usually after you've studied your first exoplanet, uh, it basically just it wants you to survey, I think it's like five planets. Situation pretty basic. Log has been um, eight, eight planets it wants you to survey. So we got plus three energy to Proxima Centauri C. And we'll see the the energy one was we used up an anomaly. or was built. So now it's all green and we've just got this uh, physics research that hasn't been built on. Debris field 250, we're going to leave it. System survey concluded. 100, we're going to research that. There's a lot of uh, anomalies in Alpha Centauri. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm having a little bit of lag. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit of lag. Jumped us around. Okay. Uh, so we've got another tradition available. Um, now we want to go through this tree. Uh, we're going to go ahead and increase survey speed 35% and science to disengage chance 50%. We can also do this one, but we'll do that one next. The extra survey speed early is going to really help us out. Construction completed. Perfect. So construction completed here. Now that's green. So we've completely filled out the solar system. Our construction ship is going to go here, build a star base, 75 research or influence, and 90 uh, alloys. This turns Proxima Centauri B into a terraforming candidate. Either option does it. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and. Council yeah. agenda ready. Oh, council agenda is ready. Let's see what we do here. It, okay, so we just click it and it turns on now. Citizen pop happiness is at 10%. Let's set a new one. Um, I think charting the unknown is a good one. Expanding the council might be nice because we, we can get some new council seats, but I think. Um, let's see. Monthly unity, faction approval, or trade growth. Xenophile, the extraction. I think charting the unknown is the best one for us now. So let's go ahead and do that. How long is it going to take? 212 months. What is that? Well, 12 months is a year. 120 is 10 years. Uh, what is that, like 18 years? Something like that? Okay. That's not terrible. Um, cool. I think that's a great place to stop for our first video. So thank you all for watching, and we'll continue the tales of the United Nations of Earth next time.